Well, let's get more on this now with Latin America analyst Javier Farhe. He joins us now from London. Good to have you back on the program, Javier. We know that there have been several military interventions in Haiti in the past, most notably by the United States. Will this latest UN-approved force work, do you think? Well, the Dominican Republic, which shares uh, the island of, uh, of Espanola with Haiti, are very pleased with that because they have suffered the consequences of the situation in Haiti. Uh, President Luis Abinader described the situation in Haiti two years ago as a low-intensity civil war. Now, it might, might work because there is a particular element which have to take into account. This is not a multinational UN force. This is what they call a multinational security support force led by uh, Kenya. So it's not going to be a UN mission. This is extremely important because UN missions in the past, in particular with Brazil, have been accused of serious violations of human rights and sexual exploitation of young women. Uh, this is not going to be a, U a UN mission. A mission. Uh, the representative of the UN in Haiti welcomed this and said that these forces would have to behave properly to avoid conflict with the local population and avoid abuses. There have been a lot of denunciations of abuses to such an extent that President Lula refused to accept that Brazil would be part of a, this kind of multinational force because of the precedents that there are in relation to these interventions. So in this particular case, it is a multinational force led by African countries, Senegal, according to the Dominican Republic, according to the foreign minister, Roberto Alvarez, who spoke recently, Senegal has also expressed its desire to be part of this force. So this should actually work. It's being welcomed by the government uh, of Mr. Henry. It's been welcomed by the Dominican Republic, which has been lobbying for this for the last two, three years. Uh, they believe this is the only solution or the only way to start a solution for the crisis in Haiti. It remains to be seen how much they are going to be engaged in fighting the local guns that control big parts of the country in Haiti. And what about the people of Haiti? Because we know the previous interventions have made many Haitians wary of outside interference. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think uh, the residents now will be more receptive this time around? I think so, yes, because the situation is so desperate that even many uh, residents have started to retaliate against the gangs because they don't see the police as a solution for the situation. There have been a lot of retaliation, a lot of executions of gang members. Don't forget that these gang members not only control populations, but roads which are used to the, for the supply of food from the countryside to the capital. So they have a huge deal of uh, control. Many police officers have given up or joined these gangs. Uh, there are business people who have been supporting these gangs. Uh, the Dominican Republic announced not long ago that the embassy of Ghana is going to report about business people from all the countries supporting these gangs. So the population will welcome this because this will be a non-UN force. This is extremely important to emphasize this because of the nature of the all UN forces. So it remains to be seen how much the Kenya, which is announced or has announced already, they will send 1,000 officials probably as early as November, uh, they will be able to engage against these guns. They are going to be sent to protect public buildings and populations. That is the initial uh, output of the mission. So I would imagine at this time, they will be welcomed by the population because they will not be uh, the blue helmets. They will be a multinational support force, which is not a UN force. Okay, Javier Farhe, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much again for joining us on the program.